all that we experience is understandable as a spectrum of vibrations. We are, as it were, living in the midst of a woven tapestry of many dimensions in which the warps and the woofs are all these different spectra of various kinds of vibrations. You wouldn't be here if it weren't for the interlocking of all these different spectra of dimensions. And what you're going to see now are what happens to particles of sand and other various particles when a sound resonates across a plate. Because when we think, we're not just sending out a wave which resonates the energy, we're sending out on a frequency outside of the range of human hearing, we're sending out a sound. Everything is sound. And that's how this universe was created. In the beginning was the word, the word was sound. As we reach a, another key threshold resonance, this entire pattern will morph into a beautifully uh, and more complex pattern of itself. Again, and again. And look at this pattern right here. Look what you're seeing right here. Look at the beautiful geometry. Here is a perfect cube. There is a perfect tetrahedron, a star tetrahedron. In two dimensions, we've got the octahedron. Very powerful images of sacred geometry held in place simply because we've achieved the vibratory pattern that allows that in this water droplet. keep visualizing and we teach this in schools to all the children that the solar system has the sun in the middle and planets going in circles around it like this and we I mean in my school we even had a little device where you had the sun in the middle and you could turn the little uh, thing on the bottom and and the planets would go around and 
you know, is this true? No, absolutely not. In fact, thinking of the solar system this way is equivalent to thinking the Earth is flat. Uh, the sun is moving at thousands of miles per second through space and our planets are following producing a huge elliptical coil in space and year after year we do not trace the, the same uh, circle in space we're actually thousands and thousands and millions of miles from where we were the year before so to think of our solar system as some flat structure that's, uh, that's stationary is again the result of isolating a system and trying to analyze it and, and typically when you do so you get the wrong data. As soon as you open the system and you realize the solar system is inside the galaxy and moving through space then you realize that actually we're making a pilgrimage literally through space as we evolve and you could even think of it in the concept of a, of a vacuum structure that we are embedding all of our evolution on the structure of the vacuum as we move through that great spiral we're producing through space. Every single individual on our planet producing that very specific spiral in space and we could follow it back for any individual all, about, all the way back when to when they were in the womb of their mother. We are reaching a point in our evolution in humanity where we have to transcend our current understanding of the physics of the universe and reach a new level, a unified level of physics where we have a whole view, a holistic view, a complete view of the physics of the universe that includes the fundamental forces of nature instead of fighting nature which results in most of the destruction that we see around us on the planet. To describe why it's spinning and why that spin is so important to keep everything in the dynamic system that it is. That's putting spin back into the equations because spin is fundamentally at the foundation of why everything works the way it works. Today's largest construction sites and quarries, huge mega machines are used to dig, cut, and lift stone. These man made creatures dwarf their creators and perform the work of thousands of men using modern hydraulic technologies. Without such equipment, builders could never construct modern skyscrapers. Yet thousands of years ago, ancient civilizations were accomplishing the same work while constructing their monuments and temples using massive stones. These enormous blocks, many weighing in excess of 100 tons, would be a challenge even for today's engineers. Yet thousands of years ago, people cut them out of solid rock, transported them for miles, and then lifted them precisely into place. But how? Did they cut these massive stone blocks with hammers, chisels, and copper wire, as mainstream archaeologists suggest? Could they have lifted and transported them without a pulley system or the wheel? Or did ancient civilizations possess advanced technologies that have since been lost to science? All over the world, 
dating from a remote and mysterious period of prehistory for which no records have come down to us. There are monuments like this. These monuments have a number of things in common. First and foremost, enormous blocks of stone, gigantic, weighing hundreds of tons. Secondly, very precise, scientific astronomical alignments. And thirdly, the greatest mystery of all, we don't know who built these monuments. We don't know when they were built, we don't know why they were built, and in most cases, we have absolutely no idea how they were built.